having occasionally known the freeing timelessness of peak experiences, we might very well ask, what is it that keeps us from having more peak time experiences? This question can be answered in several ways. First, our cultures in the West confuse physical time, measured time, and personal time, providing only one word for time. They implicitly teach that we should always feel time flowing. This makes it difficult to facilitate peak experience of any kind. Second, very few people are teaching direct methods to optimize our personal time. Numerous meditation techniques evoke a sense of timelessness, though they often try to just ignore time's passing rather than examine exactly what time is. However, numerous direct practices are offered by the TSK Association to understand experientially what time is and transform it. Third, Western cultures implicitly teach that turning away from or even suppressing any kind of negative experience is normal and natural. However, when we turn away from negative experiences, the experience of time passing arises and is strengthened. An example of how this occurs is discussed in the next slides. Repressing or suppressing the energy of negative feeling transforms it into a stronger sense of time flowing, whether it seems to flow more slowly or more quickly. Relating to experiences as negative or positive is only one of numerous possibilities. Infants don't seem to have a sense of time passing, but we start learning to avoid some feelings quite early on. According to the psychiatrist Peter Hartokoulos, the experience or sense of time and later the perception of time as an attribute of objective reality is a function of consciousness. It grows along with consciousness beginning with the differentiation of the self from the object world. What gradually establishes the sense of time as duration is the felt inadequacy of the self in terms of growing unpleasure and the awareness of the possibility that the need fulfilling object, mother, may or may not come. Let's take a look at how our feeling of time passing is created and strengthened. Here's an example from Jed, the optimal worker in my book, Results in No Time. My wife Becky and I were at the end of a wonderful weekend at a lake in Wisconsin. We had both slowed down to the point where we just timelessly looked out on the lake as the sun went down below a cloak of color but she had to leave on a business trip that evening. After she packed her bags, we said goodbye. I felt very sad. But rather than deal with the sadness, I started thinking about when we'd be together again a week later. As we put her things into the car, I said, I miss you already. And I actually did feel a bit as though she had already left. Time slipped by quickly as I unsuccessfully tried to savor the last moments with her. I think what happened was that I avoided the sadness and then the repressed sadness energy showed up as my intensified feeling of time passing. In summary, there are two types of time management. Conventional time management is used to determine what we want to do by organizing, prioritizing, scheduling, and so on. But conventional time management usually presumes a sense of time passing and the linear time paradigm. Inner time management helps optimize the way we do things by increasing our involvement in whatever we're doing. 
we can move to increasing levels of involvement. Holding back from doing something, resigning ourselves to doing something, getting into it, being involved, being preoccupied, engrossed, or absorbed. Although Western cultures still believe that a sense of time passing is normal, the pressure seems to be growing stronger and stronger. In this time of accelerating change and increasing time pressure, it's becoming more and more necessary to change our perception of time. Time management teachers Hunt and Haight wrote, Many corporations are aware that they need to alter how they perceive time and its relationship to personal satisfaction if they mean to remain competitive. Dr. Rechtschaffen wrote, Shifting time is essential not only to physical and mental well-being, but also to improved productivity. A good many management consultants believe this as much as I do. Here's a list of resources available for time management and time mastery. Training seminars include Mastering Linear Time, Organizing Your Lifetime, Taking the Pressure Out of Deadlines, Beat the Clock, and Turning Procrastination Around. Coaching is available for individuals and groups. Take advantage of a free half-hour needs assessment interview. Many publications are available. Two books, Flow, Glow, and Zero, and Results in No Time. Numerous articles on time management and time mastery. Cassette tapes, email newsletters, and two websites tskassociation.org and manage-time.com. If you have any questions or want more information, email steve at manage-time.com.